Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope everybody is having an awesome uh, day and to this point has had an awesome week. Uh, no matter where you're watching this video, I really hope that you take time to really listen, by, listen to it and think about what I'm trying to convey here. Um, working with people on a number of different levels to improve their situation, improve their condition, uh, to help them pursue uh, their goals and their dreams, to up their game, however you want to uh, address it. Uh, as a therapist, as a counselor, uh, as a life coach, as a business coach, and all the other ways that I do that. One of the things that I learned early on learned early on is that most people are not literate when it comes to finance and what I mean by literate is to truly understand the dynamic of money not just currency the dynamic of money how money functions how money operates what is money what <clears throat> what can money be used for um, ways to earn money generate money uh, leverage money all of these different things are simply a small portion of what is the to totality of financial literacy the problem that I see more than anything is that there is a certain group that historically struggles um, and almost to a person one of the problems is that there are no conversations about money in the home. Uh, people who come from impoverished backgrounds, places where the idea of money is lack, the idea of money is scarcity. There's very few conversations about money. And then the only conversation about money is I don't have it right now. That's what a kid hears most of the time when it comes to money is we'll have to wait until I get paid. I don't have it right now, maybe next time. So there's always this idea in a child's head that money is scarce, it's hard to come by, it's gonna be a long haul. So the psychology of money is off and then there's no true understanding of the principles of money. There's no understanding of the, the need for diversity when it comes to investments or that investments, uh, participating in investing is not an option, it's a requirement that there should be multiple streams of income, that the goal is passive income, but and definitely not the number one crown jewel of developing wealth there are actually two the largest is compound growth find a way to invest in something that produces a return in a comp on, on compound interest number two manage your debt the number one enemy to debt i mean the number one enemy to building wealth is debt matter of fact the simplest equation that you can get to come with net worth is your complete at set per, per portfolio, everything that you have a value, whether it's money, whether it's property, whether it's jewelry, uh, whether it's, um, I mean, even, even digital equipment and it, anything that has a value that can at some point be liquidated is a part of your asset portfolio. Well, you take that whole asset portfolio, whether it's a hundred dollars or a hundred million, and you subtract your debt from it. And what you will actually find is in many cases in this country, because everybody is focused on a consumeristic mindset because that's what drives capitalism, you don't realize uh, we're literally in a debt-based economy. And so debt, getting people in debt uh, through, through consumerism is what drives the economy. There's no actual uh, asset are anything underwriting the value of the U.S. dollar. 
there's it's not gold it's not diamonds it's not oil it's simply that we got debt we can sell we literally have are leveraging overspending to underwrite the economy and this is a zero-sum game what that means is that for some to win, for someone to win in a zero-sum game, someone wins, someone loses. For someone to get something, someone else is giving something up. And so the target is the consumer-minded person. Uh, a lot of people who are impoverished have identity crises as well, as well. And I know this is a little bit beyond what I really wanted to talk about, but I'm trying to get a point across. Get a point across. What do I mean by that? They don't really have a sense of their value. So they're looking to establish and validate themselves by their things rather than by who they are and what they bring to the table and what they can contribute to the world around them. They are looking at what they own. So they will have a car they can't afford, a house they can't afford, clothes they can't afford, uh, jewelry they can't afford. They'll look a million bucks, but actually be completely broke. Why? Because the assets they own is worth less than the debt they owe. Because 99% of what they're purchasing immediately depreciates in value the moment they purchase it, especially brand new cars. So, and then in, in purchasing a home, you're working against yourselves because instead of compound growth, you're having compounded debt. And so, the idea that just simply purchasing a home is helping you build wealth needs to be better understood because on the surface, your home is a liability long before it becomes an asset. And you have to understand that that's if you mortgage it and get, a fi get it financed, you don't have some kind of way of actually coming up with the money to pay for it in cash, or at least pay half of the price because you gotta understand, again, over 15 year period is one, uh, it, 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 it's a number, and over a 30 year period, it's an even higher number. And so you need to know what those numbers are and realize just how much you're sacrificing by doing it the conventional way. Every Again, this is a zero sum game. Now, I'm saying all that to say this, while I love helping people with the Mastering Money uh, course and the uh, Seven Steps to Financial Freedom course, uh, that's for people who have a sense, an idea of what money is and what's going on, some ideas of what their financial goals are and really want to learn the dynamic of how money works in a global uh, economy and how the new global economy, economy impacts it. But what I learned is very few people can really have an educated and informed discussion about money because they simply don't understand. They know they work for it and probably work too hard for it, but they don't understand the rest. And so they consistently work and most will retire broke or underprepared to live their lives after retirement, which is another hustle. The retirement thing is to get you out of the way for the younger groups to come in and have work because nobody's creating their own work. Nobody's creating passive income. Nobody's creating ways that can sustain them long after they don't have a direct uh, source of income where you're working. Ain't nothing wrong with work. I'm gonna work until I drop. I'm never retiring. But I am retiring from the need to work. And that's the goal, to be able to have enough things going on and to be set and, 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 and balanced in your total portfolio at a way that you never have to work again. Uh, everything you do is because you want to, because you're passionate about it, because it's something you love to do. That's the importance of teaching it, but we're not teaching it back to the original point. We're not teaching it to our children. Our children are getting off to a bad start. Our children are going out and accruing hundreds of thousands of dollars in student loan debt for credentials and and degrees that they won't be able to use uh, to pursue the careers they want or that won't produce the revenue they need in order to pay the loan back within a reasonable amount of time. So they'll actually spend way more on the loan because the loan's accruing interest and they're paying it off over time. And that, again, 
it's working against them. That's just in going off into college, buying cars they can't afford, getting in the credit card debt, uh, not understanding the value of a dollar, not understanding the, uh, the principle of the value of currency in that in order to uh, spend it, you have to earn it. And there is a ratio of hours work to money earned so that the money can be spent and so you when you don't teach them that's where the whole notion of money don't grow on trees parents are trying to tell you i actually had to work for this i actually put in x amount of hours did x amount of things in order to get it and you think that if you just come ask for it it's just sitting there waiting on you that there's a value to this outside of what you're going to spend it on and the front end value is the amount of time and energy and effort you put into it and we don't teach that to our children. Our children need to learn that part as well so that they have an appreciation of it, so that they don't throw it away, you know, as the old folks used to say, so that it isn't burning a hole in their pocket, so that they think about maybe better ways of spending it, which to me, the best way to spend money is investing it and letting it work for you so that at a certain point in time, you can spend pretty much freely and not be concerned. But there has to be a period of time where you are un you are aware of your spending, that you are conscious of your spending, that you are tightly wound and focused on how you're going to spend. That stuff needs to be taught. And that's why me and my team put together uh, the uh, setting your team up for success through financial literacy uh, guide. 35 plus pages of straightforward tips on how to teach your child and your team about money and for some let's be honest it's going to be a lesson for you as well it's going to teach you some things you didn't know it's going to show you some things you didn't know and it may put you in a position and prepare you to actually sign up for one of the more advanced courses uh, that I teach but you have to learn money this isn't a guarantee of getting rich. This isn't a guarantee that there are never gonna be problems in your life, because I can tell you, a lot of what I've experienced came through some of the financial hardships. Yes, I've had way more financial success than I've had financial hardships, but when the hardships hit, they hit hard, and I could have easily folded if I didn't have financial literacy, because I would have panicked. But because I knew and understood money, I said, no matter what I am, where I am right now, I can get back to where I was, and I can get there within X amount of time. I could literally sit up and pull up an equation and know what route I could take. If I took this route, what would happen? If I take that route, what, was ha what would happen? If I took the hardest route in the sense of sacrifice, I could get there a lot quicker. If I wanted to ease some of the pain of it, I could even take a little longer. And then know within a re relatively reasonable accuracy, level of accuracy, when you're gonna get there. All of this is possible for anyone. People talk about, well, I can't afford to. No, you can't afford not to. You cannot afford not to be on your financial literacy game. You cannot afford not to be using money wisely. I can't afford to do, I can't afford, look, I, I tell people the, the, uh, these two analogies all the time. Theodore Johnson uh, never made more than $14,000 a year working for UPS back in the day. Uh, had a friend who was well off and asked the friend what should he do if he wanted to do that and his friend told him take 20% of his income and invest it in compound uh, in, in something that produced a compound growth compound compound interest and his response was like most people I can't afford that I only make X amount of dollars a year there's no way I can afford that and the friend said there's no way you can't if you were if, if the government decided to tax you an additional 20 percent you would pay it and why you would complain but you would pay it why not tax yourself why not tax yourself with a reasonably reasonably predictable outcome in your favor and so he did it and he never stopped working at ups but when he retired he was worth 72 million dollars at the age of 90 he donated half of his wealth to charity uh, another situation, not as drastic and money-wise, but in impact to me just the same. A young black per, uh, man worked his entire life as a parking lot attendant, never made more than $12 an hour. 
he just happened to work in the financial district where you had all the financial planners, the money managers, the stockbrokers, everybody coming and parking their cars at his garage. And he would hit them up for advice. He would talk to them and hit them up for advice. And they would give it to him and he would take their advice. And by the time he retired, he was worth over a million dollars. A person who worked and made $12 an hour was worth a million dollars and he kept going and he taught his kids and his kids are doing better. They're still building uh, on what their father learned and shared with them. That's the thing. We've got to learn it. We've got to share it. We can't keep passing down poverty. We can't keep passing it down. The inheritance isn't supposed to be poverty. The inheritance is supposed to be an advancement from the original position. And we are failing in that drastically. So I created this guide as a starter point for teaching financial literacy. It's $10. It's a di You order it within 24 hours, you'll have it. You can open it up and you can start using it. It's that simple. But we've got to start taking action. We've got to stop sitting and resting on our laurels and hoping something's going to happen and wishing something's going to happen and doing all kinds of things from sh taking shots at the lotto to gambling and everything else uh, with no real true pr plan. The time is up for that. So I'm about to check out, but I wanted to share that with you. On that note, I'm out. You guys have an unbelievable day.